Sorry? Huh? I'm sorry, say again? Oh, yeah. So the Moran's I value being somewhere in this zone here will tell you that the level of spatial autocorrelation you have is not much different from the level of spatial autocorrelation you would expect in a world that is totally random. Right? But suppose the Morenzi I value you got is right on the tails. Like this is positive Morenzi and that is negative Morenzi. So suppose the Morenzi value you got is right here or maybe even further. What's your conclusion? The similarity you're seeing in linear population cannot be justified. Anyone else? Well, from the statistical perspective, the only thing you can say is that that the level of spatial correlation is unlike to be observed when there when there's no process affecting the spatial pattern, right? When there's only randomness. It's unlike. Uh, because we are ecologists and we are not interested in the statistical perspective, who cares about the statistical perspective, uh, we conclude that there is spatial correlation. So that we go straight to the point. Uh, so, oops. When Moran's eye falls within this zone, or maybe even further, then uh, we conclude that the null hypothesis is false. We can say that here. There's no statistician in the room. Uh, so if, if the null hypothesis is false, it means that there is a spatial correlation affecting your map or, or your data. OK? All right? Good. OK. But in our exercise, what we have seen so far is a way to calculate one Moran's I value, a single one, given one connectivity between sites. For the Kansas data set, there was seven connections. And then that particular Moran's I value will tell me how much the the, these pairs are similar or not. However, frequently, we want to know how much everything is related to everything. Not only these sites nearby. What if I want to know what is the relationship between sites over here and over there? Right? So I'm, not, not, I'm asking now not what's the similarity or dissimilarity between, closed, between uh, sites that are nearby. Now I want to know the relationship between sites that are even further away. In that case, we need to calculate multiple Moran's I. Not only one, but multiple ones. And we're going to find a way to uh, divide the, the spatial spectrum into classes, and then we are going to calculate Moran's I value for mutually exclusive classes, classes that do not overlap. And so what we have done before was, for example, calculate the relationship between sites within this circle. And the circle was moving so that we would get a picture of how things are related within this area, or, or within distances that are equivalent to the radius of this uh, circle. But that will only tell me one part of the story, which is how are things that are close by related. But what now if we try to understand what is the difference between sites that are within a minimum of this distance and the maximum of this distance. That should give me 
a picture of how, how regionally, how, how species richness is, is structured regionally, not only locally. So I'm now looking at further uh, or higher spatial scales, and I'm now looking at differences or of how differences are structured in a much larger spatial scale. Is that okay? Good. So now I'm gonna have one more NZI value for the first uh, radius, and then I'm gonna have a different more NZI value for a larger radius. And I can have any radius I want. Uh, what is important to remember here is that when I increase radius for the second, third, fourth Morenzi value, I'm going to exclude all the radius that have been already calculated. So what I'm comparing are things that are within this zone here in blue or gray. Uh, okay, are we okay with that? Good. So now I'm going to move this, this zone around the globe, comparing everything that is within that distance. And the math is going to be exactly the same. We're going to multiply Z values, and then if these two, this, this pair of sites are within this radius, I'm going to multiply it by one. If it's outside the radius, I'm going to multiply it by zero, which means not counted at all. Okay? Good. So spatial cor correlograms, they can evaluate the behavior of spatial correlation across space. It's like calculating in spectrum of out spatial out correlation. How do spatial out correlation varies when you become more and more distant? Okay? We can build a a spatial correlogram by calculating multiple Morans I when we have non-overlapping W matrices. So I'm going to have first a W matrix that has one for sites that are within a short distance and zero for all other sites. And then I'm going to build a second W matrix which has zero for short distance sites and once for intermediate distance sites and zero for everything else. And a third W matrix, which will have zero for short and intermediate distance sites and once for large distance sites. Is that okay? Now, for each W matrix, I'm going to recalculate a different Moran's I. How, do, how does Moran I value vary as a function of increasing in spatial scale? So, here is a simplified uh, distance matrix uh, between two, four, six uh, sites. And here's the distance between them. Suppose I want to calculate a correlogram with only two classes. So the first class is going to be between 0 and 2. So everything that is within 0 and 2 becomes 1. Everything that is larger than 2 becomes 0. So I'm going to recalculate Moran's I for using this matrix. And then I'm going to calculate a second distance matrix in which any value larger than 2 will become 1. And values that are smaller or less than 2 will become 0. And for this matrix, I'm going to calculate another Moran's I. Okay? Good. And then we end up with this famous graph, which is very useful. It tells me what is the Moran's I for each distance class. So this, this is the relationship, the degree of similarity of sites that are within this distance. And this is the degree of similarity 
for sites that are within this distance, right? So what can you tell fr from looking at this graph? The closer you are to the, in distance, the higher the correlation, and then the further you move out, the lower the correlation. So it confirms your introductory statement that you can be related, the ones that are related are, are close together, similar. Mm -hmm. The ones which are far. But when you say that the far away they are, they are also similar. And you just say the first sentence, let say it's closer is similar. But from this, it's this extreme is okay, and the extreme is okay, and the distance is increasing down. This extreme is not okay. Yeah. The extreme, when you're moving, let's say, towards 12, they are not similar. Yeah. Which is partly correct for the first sentence of Toplas model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think go very far again, they meet. I think that's what it means. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? So a trained, a well-trained spatial analyst uh, with experience and like with time and practice could look at this graph and imagine what the map is or vice versa. You can look at the map and guess what the correlogram will be. And it's pretty important to, to be able to do that. What else can we tell by looking at this? You guys got part of the picture. You can predict. Mm -hmm. You predict what? As you go, the distance. You can predict. Uh huh. Yeah. As you go further away, as you come closer, you can predict. As we come closer, we can predict. Yes. Predict what? At the same time, as you go further, you can also predict. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. If you look at the the class between four and eight, mm -hmm. you know, it goes to zero without this uh, uh, without any correlation. So, mm -hmm. so if you go far away, there is less correlation. But I don't know. Looking at the graph, there is some. It looks a little bit flatter, so does that mean yeah. that that area is similar, so it's more like a plateau? Mm -hmm. okay. Is that a question or a <laughs> statement? <laughs> 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 several people that haven't said a word today. Shorter distances between uh, two maybe species. In this case, we have a higher and positive um, Moran's eye. So those are very similar things. As you move away, you increase the distance. The Moran's eye becomes negative means those are very dissimilar things. I think from exactly what he was trying to say, maybe I didn't understand that. Closer things are similar. And the higher positive Moran's eye also indicates that they are similar because the distance between them is shorter. The negative is they are dissimilar. Anyone else? So let's see what we agree. Um, so suppose this is the shortest distance two sites can have, like one. Sites that are 
distant apart uh, by one unit of space, are they similar or, I, or, or are they dissimilar? How many think it's dissimilar? How many think it's similar? Yeah. Well, they are very similar. Uh, higher Morin's I value will give you higher similarity. And as you increase distance, I'm now comparing sites, only sites, that are three units of space, space apart. Three units of distance apart. And has the similarity increased or decreased? Increased or decreased? Increased. Has it gone up or down? Down. down. It has gone down. To the point here, close to six, Moren's eye turns out to be close to zero. What does that mean? So I'm going to ask in a different way. So if I'm here and I'm asking what's the value one, one unit away, do you think that value is very similar to the one I'm observing here or, or very different? Very similar or very different? Very similar. very similar. But now I know what the value is here and I want to know what the value would be, and I don't know yet, but I want to know what the value would be six units away from me. What can I tell? Dissimilar? Six units away, it's close to zero. So what can I tell about that value? <laughs> I'm sorry? I think it will be difficult to predict whether they are similar or dissimilar, six units away. It's very difficult to predict if it's similar or dissimilar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? It's, it's, more it's kind of a random figure, so it could be. Yeah, it's, it's random, it's, it's zero, right? Yeah. yeah. So if it's zero, then it could be both ways. So uh -huh. it's random, so. Mm -hmm. By chance, it could be similar or the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's very little we can tell about that. In fact, you don't know. That's what, the, that's what we call the in distance of independence. That's the distance in which you cannot tell anything about a, a two pair of sites. You, you cannot. You may go there and it may be very similar. Or you can go there and it's, it can be not similar at all. Now, imagine one thing. Suppose someone gives you some money to do a survey. How are you going to space your sampling sites? Mm 